Welcome to First United Methodist Church of Olney, Texas, but also uh, Gene United Methodist Church in Gene, Texas. We come together tonight, Jan and I, uh, to bring you a Monday Thursday uh, slash a Holy Thursday worship service. I hope you're joining us online this evening. I hope you received your email with, uh, with what you need for the service tonight. Uh, that will be your Bible to follow along in Scripture, uh, a, a basin of water or a bowl of water, uh, for that part of the service and then uh, your communion bread and uh, wine or juice or or whatever you have in your house that might represent uh, the body and the blood of Christ we're we're um, uh, we're not too particular tonight because we realize that it's really not about the bread and it's really not about uh, the wine it's about the body and the blood of Jesus Christ and so I, I uh, invite you to take your liturgy and join us as we begin this service this evening. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Christ has prepared a feast of love. Becoming a humble servant. Most merciful God, we, your church, confess that often our spirit has not been that of Christ, where we have failed to love one another as he loves us, where we have pledged loyalty to him with our lips and then betrayed, deserted, or denied him. Forgive us, we pray. And by your spirit, make us faithful in every time of trial. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. But Christ suffered and died for us, was raised from the dead and ascended on high for us, and continues to intercede for us. Believe the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. 
I invite you to take your Bible uh, this evening, and if you would bow with me for our prayer for illumination. May the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God. You are our strength. You are our Redeemer. Amen. Our first scripture tonight comes from Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 through 14. Hear the word of the Lord. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in portion, proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembly, congregation of Israel, shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they shall eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat of it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the, the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. I'll be reading from Psalm 116, verses 1 and 2, and then 12 through 19. I love the Lord because he hears my request for mercy. I'll call out to him as long as I live, because he listens closely to me. What can I give back to the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I'll lift up the cup of salvation. I'll call on the Lord's name. I'll keep the promise I made to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. The death of the Lord's faithful is a costly loss in his eyes. Oh yes, Lord, I am definitely your servant. I am your servant and the son of your female servant. You freed me from the chains, so I'll offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to you. And I'll call on the Lord's name. I'll keep the promise I made to the Lord in the presence of all God's people, in the courtyards of the Lord's house, which is the center of Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Our next scripture will come from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, he took the cup also, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you drink, for as often as you eat of this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Be reading John 13, 1 through 17, and then 31b through 35. Before the festival of Passover, Jesus knew that his time had come to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the, in the world, he loved them fully. Jesus and his disciples were sharing the evening meal. The devil had already provoked Judas. Simon Iscariot's son, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew the Father had given everything into his hands and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the table and he took off his robes. Picking up a linen towel, he took off his robes and he tied it around the wa his waist. Then he poured the water into a wash basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he was wearing. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You don't understand what I'm doing now, but you will understand later. No, Peter said, you will never wash my feet. Jesus replied, Unless I wash you, you won't have a place with me. Simon Peter said, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus responded, those who have bathed need only to have their feet washed because they are completely clean. You disciples are clean, but not every one of you. He knew who would betray him. That's why he said, not every one of you is clean. After he washed the disciples' feet, he put on his robes and returned to his place at the table. He said to them, Do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you speak correctly because I am. If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you too must wash each other's feet. I have given you an example, just as I have done, you must also do. I assure you, servants aren't greater than their master, nor are those who are sent greater than the one who, who sent them. Since you know these things, you will be happy if you do them. When Judas was gone, Jesus said, Now the human one has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify the human one in himself, and will glorify him immediately. Little children, I am with you for a little while longer. You will look for me, but just as I told the Jewish leaders, I also tell you now, where I am going, you can't come. I give you a new commandment. Love each other, just as I have loved you, so you must also love each other. This is how everyone will know that you are my disciples, when you love each other. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our scriptures tonight uh, share with us Israel's story. As we look back in the Exodus text, we find uh, the Lamb. We're reminded of the lamb from last uh, Sunday when we talked about Simon and, and uh, his boys going into Jerusalem, bringing their lamb without blemish for the sacrifice. Uh, and through that experience, they actually were able to, to witness uh, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Uh, they were actually able to uh, witness the, the blood, the blood on the doorpost. Is, is the blood on the cross, Jesus' blood on the cross, on the two, two ends of the cross. Uh, and, and God said, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No harm will come to you. When we look at the psalm text, Psalm 116, we're reminded of our, our crying out to God. And that God hears us. Every time that we cry out, God hears our cries. God responds to our cries. And therefore, we worship God. We worship God uh, in heart, mind, body, and soul. We lift the cup of salvation uh, in Christ's blood, the scripture says. And we will do that uh, in our communion service.
tonight. Uh, but in doing that, we will remember. And when we remember, we will always worship God. We will always give God praise. Paul reminds us in the Corinthian text of the uh, communion service of that night that Jesus spent with his disciples uh, in the upper room. Uh, Paul reminds us that the bread uh, is the body of Christ uh, and that it is broken, it is given for you and it's given for me. And we remember. We remember the cup, the cup of salvation that, that the psalm talked about, but also the cup of the new covenant, Paul says, uh, in Christ's blood. It reminds us of the, the old covenant in uh, Exodus. Now we have the new covenant in Jesus Christ. And we remember, we always remember uh, by participating in Holy Communion uh, until Christ comes. Uh, it even uh, has it on the altar in remembrance of me. And so we, we remember. John reminds us uh, from the gospel of the water. Uh, the water that, that cleanses, water that uh, cleanses our bodies, water that quenches, quenches our thirst. Uh, so water is a symbol uh, of new life, of new birth. Jesus washes the disciples' feet uh, in our text uh, tonight. He washes the, the, the disciples' feet uh, in servanthood. Washing feet was the job of the lowest slave of the household. It was the lowest job for the lowest person. Jesus takes the towel, puts it around his waist, gets the basin of water, and he goes around and he washes the disciples' feet. Even Judas's feet, the one who would betray him. It's an expression of love. Jesus shows his love for his disciples by washing their feet. And he says, this is the new commandment that I give you that you love one another just as I have loved you. So he washes Peter's feet. He washes Judas' feet. And symbolically, he washes your feet and he washes my feet. He says in verse 12 of this 13th chapter, do you know what I have done for you? No, we really don't know. We really have no clue of the full uh, meaning of that. We have water here uh, this evening. And you have water at your house. I invite you uh, to place your hands in the water. And Jan can join me. And as we feel the coolness of the water and its, its wetness, we, we realize uh, how valuable water is in our life. Uh, whether we are going through a drought and we are thirsty or whether we uh, feel dirty and we need to be cleansed. Jesus uses the, the symbol of water that we might become clean, that we might quench our thirst, not only uh, with physical water, uh, but spiritual water, spiritual rebirth, spiritual cleansing uh, that Jesus offers you and offers me. We come to our, our time of Holy Communion tonight. So I invite you to uh, take your handout that was emailed to you. Uh, and if you don't have that, that is okay. Um, we, uh, we know this. We know this text. But as we, uh, we begin tonight, I invite you to join us with the liturgy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, up, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your, your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 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 I invite you at this time to take your bread and take your juice, take your wine or whatever you have uh, for bread and whatever you have for wine and if you will, will hold it up and if you would bow with me. Loving God, we come together tonight in remembrance that we might remember the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and how he offered his body and his blood on our behalf. We pray, Lord, that you would bless these sacraments, these sacraments of bread and juice, sacraments of bread and wine, crackers and, and wine, whatever we have before us this morning that we could gather from uh, our households uh, in this quarantine time that might uh, symbolize uh, what your wonderful son has given to us in the body and the blood, the new covenant. Uh, we ask your blessings upon it, consecrate it, uh, that we might partake of it and remember. Remember the sacrifice that Jesus had for us. Amen. And then I invite you to uh, take the sacraments, uh, share it with your family. If your family is uh, with you, uh, we, we break the bread, uh, symbolizing the broken body of Christ given for each of us. Body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed on the cross of Calvary for the forgiveness of your sins. Praise the Lord. Thy name, 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. May Jesus Christ, who for our sake became obedient unto death, even death on a cross, keep you and strengthen you this night and forevermore. Amen.